My name is uh, Pavel Matzenauer and uh, I'm a software engineer at uh, NXP Semiconductors located in the Czech Republic. And I'm going to follow up on uh, Kevin's earlier presentation pretty much and talk about uh, running accelerated neural networks using uh, mainly PyArmanen and give some examples uh, around the new uh, Python interface. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to introduce Armanan. So this is going to be somewhat a recap. Uh, maybe introduce a little how uh, it's interconnected with Linaro. Uh, afterwards, I'm going to dive deeper uh, into the Python interface, which was introduced in uh, uh, in the. You can actually hide this. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, then afterwards I'm going to uh, introduce more or dive deeper into the Python interface, which was introduced in the 2005 release, that means around uh, three months ago, and explain more about how it was developed for those who are interested in Python wrapping. And then at the, at the end, I'm going to talk about uh, acceleration of neural networks and how to do that th through uh, Armen and backends, which are basically the enabler for that and uh, also explain a bit about how to develop your own third party backend. Okay, uh, so this is going to be a recap. So what is Armen and? Uh, Armanen is a middleware inference engine for machine learning on the edge. So um, I'd like to stress the world, uh, the word middleware here, because uh, it connects it connects your high level high level machine learning framework such as TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, ONNX. Um, by ONNX, I mean the ONNX format, so that can be. Uh, uh, exported, for example, through uh, PyTorch or MXNet or Cafe. So you have all these uh, high-level frameworks. You pretty much train your uh, train your uh, neural model there. You export it to your preferred format. So, for example, uh, TensorFlow Lite is uh, a very popular format used uh, used on Embedded lately. And then you load it into Armanen. Armen optimi uh, optimizes the model and uh, delegates it to whatever software uh, uh, to whatever software at the opposite end. So it can be ARM compute library, uh, which accelerates uh, your model through the Neon instruction set or uh, through OpenCL. It can be the Ethos and NPU driver. Uh, it can be your own third party driver. Uh, well, pretty much any software. Yeah, so it doesn't even have to be directly a driver. It can be uh, some high level uh, compute engine. Uh, so that's basically where uh, where Armanen stands. Uh, there is also an Android HAL interface available. So if you want to use it on Android, you can. Uh, it is actually optimized. Uh, the benefits of using Armanen compared, let's say, to other frameworks uh, would be mainly that it is optimized for uh, Cortex-A CPUs through the ARM Compute Library. It is optimized for the Mali GPUs, again, through the ARM Compute Library, but through the OpenCL interface. So you can even use it on uh, other devices. It's uh, The only thing you need is uh, OpenCL and a few, uh, a few requ uh, hard requirements for that it has to be OpenCL 1.1 1 .1, uh, and you need a few extensions, but uh, I'm going to talk about it later. It is also optimized for ethos and NPUs. Uh, actually, the ethos and backend is not included directly in the Armen and repository. So uh, if you want that, and you have ethos and uh, available on your device you have to pull it from a separate repository uh, i have uh, as well i have links on other side, uh, slides uh, and the last thing it is optimized for uh, is the idotem x8 uh, microprocessors so uh, those are a uh, those are multimedia microprocessors for 
some are uh, targeted for machine learning, some are targeted for graphics or displays. So th these also have uh, Cortex A CPUs and uh, they have a dedicated NPU, uh, which has a third party driver, as I mentioned here available uh, for ARM and AM. So that enables acceleration. Okay, so uh, how, it's, um, how is how is uh interconnected with Linaro? So originally it was all managed by ARM, and then in uh, mid 2018 it was donated to the Linaro AI initiative. So around uh, two years ago, and since then it is still mostly developed by by ARM. Uh, there's quite a lot of developers dedicated to that. So uh, if you want to uh, raise a pull request, you can. It's pretty easy. Everything is done on ML platform uh, uh, through uh, through Garrett. So uh, you just pull the code, edit it, push it afterwards, and the only thing uh, you need apart uh, from uh, signing. Uh, signing you contributed. So apart from that, you just need a plus two from one of the ARM core developers. And when that's done, uh, you uh, you may have your uh, you may have your contribution up in the master branch. Uh, it is released quarterly on GitHub, and all the releases are actually synchronized with ARM Compute Library, which is somewhat a hard dependency for uh, ARM and AN. Because well, uh, without uh, without the let's say base uh, backends, OpenCL and Neon, uh, it wouldn't be all that useful. So uh, th those two are uh, those two are released uh, in sync. Uh, for any discussions, report bugs, or maybe even to start a discussion, so well, I would uh, I would suggest to use GitHub. And uh, anyone uh, anyone from arm or even from the community may uh, may respond uh, respond to your requests so uh, now something about uh, pyarmanan so pyarmanan was the uh, interface uh, python interface which was added in uh, the 2005 release uh, as mentioned by kevin it's uh, it's only a wrapper interface uh, around uh, around the Armin and dynamic library. So on the background, uh, it runs uh, all the C++ compute uh, or it, it, uh, it runs the dynamic library and on, only on the front end it exposes the Python. So there is no additional compute or there's very uh, very little overhead done by Python. There are actually a few convenient functions. Uh, I'm going to show a few, for example, copying, uh, copying data to uh, NumPy arrays, but that's uh, basically just a convenience for the developer. It's, uh, they, they don't implement any compute. Uh, the SWIG project was used to generate the wrappers, so I'm going to talk about that later. And also, in case someone would be interested in uh, using legacy versions, so using PyArmanen uh, before it was actually published in 2005, there is a uh, on GitHub uh, there is a project by NXP uh, which provides a standalone uh, stand uh, a standalone package uh, using which you can uh, you build your wrappers. The difference is that it is completely a standalone project. It uh, doesn't build Armanen on its own. So you actually have to come with uh, pre-compiled libraries and uh, header files uh, to which you want to link it to and then run either the standalone scripts or uh, run CMake and it will do all the Python magic and uh, output either a binary package, a wheel, which is platform specific or uh, a source package which is platform independent uh, the difference really is that uh, uh, if when you build a binary package uh, it works on the machine you are building in on or uh, 
if you are cross compiling it on the uh, machine you are cross compiling it for and if you are building a source package it kind of only contains mostly the source codes so afterwards when you uh, install it on your target machine it compiles there so uh, you need to have a compiler like gcc or uh, something like that available yeah so uh, on the right, uh, you can see uh, this is actually applicable for both for the standalone project and for Arm and Ann, how to build it. So you, either using CMake, you just add one option, so whether you want to build the wheel and and or the source package, you can build both. Uh, the same for the standalone project, or you can do it completely standalone. So in the Pi Arm and Ann folder. Python, PyArmanan, uh, there are scripts available there and you may pretty much run them one by one and uh, use exports along the way and it will do the same thing. You have much more control over it, but well, you are doing it manually. Uh, so uh, now about Python wrapping. Um, this might be interesting for those of you who are, uh, because generally there is a lot of uh, C++ libraries available and it's nice to interface with Python. So the advantages of Python, right, are uh, that you just install your modules using pip, you have all those uh, math, uh, math modules, analytics modules, um, uh, even like graphs, matplotlib, whatever. Uh, and you don't really have those for C++ or at least it's uh, it's a pain to integrate them into C++. So uh, that's where Python kicks in. And if you have a C++ library, uh, which is very robust and high performing, such as Armanan, uh, then it's nice to have a Python interface for it. Uh, one of the options to generate an interface is SWIG. There are, of course, other options uh, depending on, on mostly on the size of your project. Uh, myself, I have experience with Boost Python here. So if I would compare the two, uh, I would suggest, for example, to use Boost Python with uh, bigger projects. Yeah, uh, when you really have tons, uh, tons of code and you know that you will be doing tons of modifications to your Python wrappers, I would maybe go with Boost Python. Otherwise, Swig is also a ni ni uh, nice option. Uh, Swig also allows to create an interface for other languages, not only, uh, not only Python, but uh, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, uh, Ruby. Uh, a lot easier for ages, so it's even integrated into into uh, standard Python modules such as setup tools. You have options there for Swig, so um, it's really uh, no rocket science, and there's tons of documentation there. Uh, in order to write your Python wrapper, you basically need just two things. Uh, the first is to expose the interface. So you pretty much need to define what you want to uh, export. You do that using Swig template. Uh, they have their own language. The, the language is described in the documentation. So, well, you just have to go through that and uh, define uh, everything you want to, uh, you want to expose. The basic thing really is uh, just to include uh, include header files, yeah, because it takes uh, it takes the header files uh, and uh, it based on the header files it generates the wrappers, and uh, yeah, uh, just like that, <laughs> and. Uh, one thing you need to do a lot while developing uh, Python wrappers is, for example, memory management. So uh, that might get tricky because Python uses garbage collection, C++, well, uh, <laughs> depends uh, how you implemented it, but it doesn't have a garbage collector. You have smart pointers and uh, uh, all funky stuff, but uh, generally you need to be aware of uh, how memory is handled. Uh, 
and in case you know that if the python wrapper uh, wouldn't would create a memory leak you, you actually have to take care of that uh, in the python wrapper so that's one thing you need to do while uh, extending the python interface uh, another file you need to modify is the setup pi uh, which is the file which builds the, your uh, Python package, so either the wheel or uh, or uh, your source package, and you need to add a setup tools extension there, uh, where you specify uh, templates, uh, which expose the interface, and you specify a dynamic library. Uh, so then afterwards, when you run the when you run the generation. Uh, where, uh, then it basically knows which uh, which binding uh, connects to uh, which call in the uh, in the dynamic library. So that's uh, what you specify there. Uh, also, when uh, if you will, would be developing a Python wrapper or specific, specifically PyAmen in here, uh, Svig4 was used there. So that's typically not part of the Debian packages, uh, which you can install. There's Swig3, so you need to compile that from sources typically. So for that, there is Swig executable option uh, if you have multiple versions of Swig available on your computer. So, and it would, uh, for some reason, it would conflict. So. Uh, uh, here is an example, uh, a code example. Kevin already had a very similar one, so I'm going to go through it uh, very quickly. Uh, the interface looks very similar to uh, to the C++ API because it's generated from the header files. So even the functions themselves, they are <laughs> called the same, like create and from binary file. It, it would be the same in uh, the C++ interface. So the difference here is that I'm using a TF Lite parse, uh, parser, not the ONX parser, and uh, I need to load my TF Lite model. Uh, there might be slight differences in individual parsers, for example, the ONX parser or uh, cafe parser, etc. cetera. They, uh, you need to specify input output sensors. TF Lite uh, has this encoded within the model, so you actually don't need to uh, specify the tensors when uh, uh, when you run inference. Uh, then you initialize the runtime, uh, and uh, you can see uh, afterwards there is preferred backends where you specify what backends you want to use. So now uh, that's something to remember. You can use multiple backends. Uh, in uh, RMNN, where they uh, they are being run depending on layer support. So if something's not uh, supported, it will fall back to the uh, to the next backend, which is a nice feature. Uh, and afterwards, after you have all this set up, uh, RMNN, uh, you may run the optimize function. What optimize does is basically uh, checks all the backends, checks uh, all the layers, uh, optimizes uh, optimizes the runtime, and the backends themselves, they uh, create uh, something called workloads. Uh, those workloads, they are like uh, tiny, well, well, how to describe it, like black boxes, uh, which uh, take care of the layer runtime so if you have a layer it's uh, might be for example convolution that's an operation right but the workload itself is uh, is the workhorse for that so uh, that's uh, something uh, which is created by the backends and then afterwards all the afterwards when all the uh, workloads are created they are chained together and armen uh, runs uh, inference uh, inference on the chain of workloads Okay, so uh, now on the second part of the code example, uh, you may uh, load the image, you may use, because it's Python, it's really easy. So uh, you may use OpenCV for that, uh, or NumPy to, uh, to generate a random, random input or whatever. Uh, you may use your favorite uh, video library or interface with your, uh, let's say video camera through Python interface, so uh, it's uh, really nice. 
to use Python here. Uh, you specify the input tensors and load the image into the input tensors. But there can, of course, there can be multiple inputs for a neural network. Uh, you specify the output. So again, there can be multiple outputs. You have to uh, bind that. And afterwards, when you run inference, you will find your result in, uh, in the output tensors. You run inference, that's the NQ uh, workload function. And then there's a example uh, which shows that there are a few convenience functions implemented in the Python API. So uh, output tensors, would normally be a very ugly tensor shape object, which would be pretty annoying to work with. So um, there is a function which uh, which uh, copies this to a NumPy array. So afterwards, you can uh, work with that and uh, and uh, post process it for whatever purpose. Uh, on the right, there is a cat. So typically what us uh, ML engineers do, we just detect uh, cats all day, sometimes dogs. And uh, uh, this is an example from, uh, from the uh, Pi Armanen repository or from the Armanen repository uh, for uh, Pi Armanen, where uh, if you run the example, uh, it will download a cat uh, example from the internet and it will output uh, something like below that it's a tabby and it uh, yeah pretty much looks like it at least based on the definition on wikipedia okay um so at the end uh, now something about uh, the arm and backends so uh, the backends, they are pretty much an abstraction which connect, lay uh, connect layers of your, uh, of your neural network to uh, the, the hardware on the opposite end. So uh, that is uh, A. Uh, there are two available, or there are three available in the basic Armen and repository in plus one. And you also have uh, other repositories with third-party backends. So uh, the three are, there is OpenCL, Neon, and the reference backend. OpenCL uh, is the specialized backend through uh, ARM compute library, which enables acceleration on Mali GPUs. Uh, the Neon backend, again, uses ARM compute library, but accelerates on anything Cortex-A. Then, uh, and then there is the reference backend, which is pretty much used just for testing or uh, testing and as a def default fallback. So if, if, your, uh, uh, if your operation wouldn't be implemented, then it will fall back to that one. Uh, and by plus one, I meant the ethos and backend. So uh, there is a separate repository uh, from ARM, which contains this backend and you have to uh, integrate it separately. Uh, it is also pretty easy to implement your own backend, so I'm going to talk about it very quickly in just a minute. So uh, just an example of uh, the Neon backend. So in order to run a model uh, inference, you need acceleration, no question there really. Uh, so uh, if, uh, if you would run the uh, reference backend, which is a single threaded uh, C++ implementation. It would take 77 milliseconds to run inference of a popular uh, model called mobile net v1. Uh, whereas if we do that on CPU uh, through the neon optimized backend, it takes on four A53 uh, cores with neon, it takes 93 milliseconds. So that's uh, 800 times faster. So uh, really this is, uh, you cannot even compare those two. Okay, uh, so uh, as I mentioned, hybrid execution. So uh, hybrid execution is a feature of ARM and N where uh, because you have multiple backends available, you are, uh, you are uh, and you want to support all the operations and all the layers uh, within your model. Uh, it uh, and you can specify multiple backends. Uh, then you can run the whole model even if uh, those layers are supported only partially. So here is an example of the VSI NPU backend, which is an accelerated backend for idiotomic side devices. 
and uh, this backend uh, it actually supports more operations than just convolution but uh, here in the example it supports only convolution so because it's specified as the first backend uh, your model will uh, your backend uh, the backend will create workloads just for convolution then afterwards uh, in the model there's average pooling layer and a fully connected layer so those are actually not imp uh, those are not in, they actually are implemented but uh, uh, in this example they are not implemented in the backend and so it will be up to the neon backend uh, to create the workload there so uh, when you run the whole inference uh, it will run uh, it will execute the all the workloads and first it will e execute them on the uh, idotomics 8 npu uh, or it will execute the convolution there. Uh, afterwards, it will skip to average pooling layer uh, full, and the fully connected layer, and it will run those on uh, the Neon CPU. So, yeah. Uh, now uh, I'm going to be pretty quick here. So, it's not really a problem to implement your own uh, third party backend. Uh, all you need is to implement uh, the interface. You need to implement individual workloads, unit tests, and of course, uh, make files to build your backend. Um, you have two options. You can either uh, create a dynamic backend or a static backend. Uh, up to you what's more convenient. Dynamic is loaded uh, during runtime. Static is directly compiled into the Armin and lib. Uh, yeah, uh, on the right, you can see an example what needs to be implemented. So uh, header files with individual workloads, tests, and the interface. The most important thing to implement here is uh, pretty much the memory manager which uh, takes care of uh, memory management and memory alloc uh, allocations on uh, for your device. So now with the last slide, uh, I'm just going to introduce a third party custom backend. So on the Idotemix 8 devices, uh, there is, uh, there is an NPU accelerator. It can be either uh, either a GPU or it can be a dedicated NPU in case of the Idotomix 8M plus. And the acceleration there is done uh, by the NNRT software stack shown on the right. So there is ARM and N and uh, there is the VSI NPU backend, which is available on uh, Code Aurora repository. And below that, there is a whole software stack consisting of uh, an NRT, of an NRT dynamic library, OVX lib dynamic library, and on the bottom, the OpenVX uh, driver. So uh, that's uh, something like a third party backend. And as you can see from the numbers here, uh, if you run inference on uh, on well uh, on the idotomics 8 m plus and uh, then it takes either 93 milliseconds for the cpu or if you really use a dedicated accelerator it uh, may take three milliseconds so that would be uh, with full with full su uh, layer support it would be like 330 uh, fps if you would be for example doing real time uh, real time detection uh, for camera okay so thank you uh, that would be pretty much it so are there any questions and that's available so any guidance as to the impact of performance utilizing the python api versus the c++ api uh, well uh, i would say that there would be very little uh, very little impact on performance because the Python just delegates all the calls to the dynamic library. So if, if you are using the C++ API, well, uh, you, have that, uh, you have your application, it still links uh, to the dynamic library and then uses the dynamic library for all the calls. Whereas if you use the Python API, it does the same thing. Yeah, uh, there, uh, the difference is that there are only, there's only an additional intermediate dynamic library 
which is uh, generated by SWIC. And it, uh, so it runs through that and uh, to the uh, lib uh, Armen and SO. So there is not much of an impact because, well, uh, neural networks are pretty computationally intensive compared to something like Python overhead. So maybe for very little models, uh, you might see something, but uh, in terms of uh, milliseconds, we didn't really observe any uh, performance impact of uh, using either Python or C++ API. It's, uh, those numbers are very similar. <laughs> 